Today we're going to talk about death. How many times did you die, Cedric? Well, I think first time was rampage. Second time was Valdiso. Third time was uh, where? Oh, Ile de la Réunion. I think I forget one. Three or four times. Okay. Three is already enough. <laughs> so yeah. let's, let's go back. First time, Rampage, what happened there? Rampage, I was with... What, what year was it? Or three, no, or three I won, or five or six, or six, or three, the year after I won. Basically, I was with... <laughs> was it when you were dressed up as a vagina? Yeah. So, so that's I, 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 I have the picture in my head and uh, I just realized, okay, I had my winning run. I had my semi-final and I know I can win with the line I have. And it was... Uh, I had the pink taco, my, my Cannondale pink bike. And I was like... Uh, I told my mechanic, hey, it's going to be a uh, carnival. I want to I wanna find some suit. And I had, uh, I drive all the way from Los Angeles, uh, my RV with uh, Mr. Bellucci, who was a teammate with me on Cannondale, dressing as a vagina. Then I drive from LA all the way to Las Vegas, dressing as a vagina. We park in Vegas. We go party in Hard Rock Cafe as a vagina. Big party. I still have the photos in my house. It's bad. <laughs> it's pretty bad. <laughs> like, okay, let's go to Utah. We go to Utah. Uh, I do, we have the RV because I decided to go camping because I didn't want to go. Uh, I want to go dig early because uh, the old days, we just two. You yeah, just have one rack and one shovel and that's it. You're not allowed to destroy the full mountain. It have to be super clean and super... I mean, it have to be light, really light on the drops and, you know, the, the things you take. Back back then, you couldn't build a bike no, park you in 10 days. No, you couldn't build a bike park in 10 days. Then, uh, yeah, uh, I decided to dress up no, as a vagina because it was difficult to ride as a vagina. And I had the super costume of Captain America and superhero Captain of America as a Frenchman. I'm like, hey, it's pretty funny. Captain America, he's French. Ha, 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 ha. It's funny. Then uh, I go there, I start digging, and we start riding, and I had my super good run. And uh, I have my semi-final run, and I have um, Kyle and Zink, who get that long dr drop where Bender just tossed the bike, land on his leg, I'm surprised he stand up. And Kyle, that's the drop, then Kyle's suicide just to win this first rampage. And I have the... His lip is there, and mine, I have to do a corner, and I jump there. That's the, just before the finger, I, I jumped in 2003 with a really sharp landing, sharp landing, short landing, when I win in 03. Then he's jumping that way, to 03, I jumped that way, and this year I was jumping that way. Then it was raining, the ground was really, really hard, and I'm like, Sadiq, you need you need to do that job at least once. I'm like, come on, you need for your qualification. I didn't have to qualify, actually. I was just like going for the final run. And I'm like, let's do that one. Just you have it in the back. It is pretty scary because it was really deep. And the landing was a little bit off camber. And after, we didn't clean it too much because not enough time and just one rack and one shovel. I'm like, I'm like oh, whatever, it's fine. I just go straight in the bush. I'd love to go in the bush. Yeah. Not really, but <laughs> then uh, I'm, I look at my makeup and I'm like, Captain America, put my helmet, on, <laughs> my little ears, because I had it under my, my helmet, put the helmet on, whoosh, whoo, pink taco is flying, whoo, I have this, I land, no problem, oh, one bush, two bush, third bush was super sick and dry, uh, super thick, yeah, and dry. Usually they're really thick and wet, but this one was really dry. <laughs> and I went over the bar, just slammed, and I fell like, oh, like crazy, like here. I just landed on the rock, basically broke my scapula. And the only thing I remember, I was watching TV cartoons like this on the sofa, and I was like, mm, it's so warm. 
And I realized that that's not normal. <laughs> and I heard, hey, hey. I wake up and I see all these people around and I'm like this on the ground. I cannot move my arm. And, you know, all those ambulance people that there's like, uh, well, where are we? Red Bull Rampage in Utah. It is like, yeah, what is your name? I'm Captain America. <laughs> and the guy like just like, lost it. It's like, all right, you have to go. You have to go. I'm like, dude, it's a joke. And I cannot move. I'm like this. And I want to do my run. And I can't. I realize that this is all broken. But I'm not going to the hospital. I'm like, I'm fine. It's fine. It's okay. I signed a paper. I'm all good. I sit down and I start watching the finals. And I'm like this. I'm in front of the RV on the seat drinking a beer. And I'm like, I'm like this. And I feel hot and cold. And I'm like, and I look at my friend, Bellucci, and I'm like, Robin, I don't feel too good. I want to puke. I start to puke once, twice. And he's like, you're good, bro. You're white. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. And all of a sudden, everything started to get white. I couldn't see the mountain so good. And I was like, maybe I should go to the hospital. Then he drive me to the hospital with the RV. We go straight in. We go, we go to the emergencies. I remember he still, I couldn't walk so good because I was blind. Then I'm like, dude, I don't know where I'm going. And I see only white. It's like, don't, don't move. I grab a wheelchair. He put me in a wheelchair. And I'm like, Robin, sorry for TV. Huh? I really want to take a shit. And he's like, dude, we have to go to the emergency. Like, yeah, but I want to puke and take a shit. And I have my Captain America suit on. And I'm like, dude, can you unzip? And then he's unzip this. I go to the toilet. I come back. But I'm still blind. I still don't know what I'm doing. I still just see pixels. Sometimes I see pictures. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes it's, it's white. And uh, basically, I go there. And I was sweating a lot, I remember. I go through a tunnel. The guy is like, all right, it's good you came. You, I was doing, a, a, my body was uh, filling up with blood. Basically, my, uh, la rat, uh, no, my liver, but whatever, spline, spin, spin, no, spin is there. I mean, uh -huh. where you have all your blood, yeah. You can take it away normally when it's broken. But this was leaking, I was filling up with blood. Helicopter from St. George to Vegas. Vegas arrived, the worst thing I've seen. I was falling in sleep. The guy in the copter is like, you sleep, you die. <laughs> and I look at him and say, like, but I'm tired, just a little bit. <laughs> and he look at me, you sleep, you die. I'm like, yeah, but I'm tired. I just sleep a little bit. You sleep, you die. And I was like, holy shit. Fuck, I'm not dying here. And there we go. Still Captain America. Still Captain America. Get out the copter, they put me in emergencies, boom, 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 everyone's taking care of me, I'm leaning from the inside, I don't still see shit. Then they start to put me all this liquid, then you can see all the veins, like to make sure they find out which vein is leaking or which problem I have. They like, okay, you have your spleen, whatever is, your spleen, here we go. Your spleen is leaking. I'm like, okay, well, how do we do this? It's like, oh, we see. Maybe we try to fix it, and if we can, we have to take it off. And I'm like, oh, great. And I remember, I'm like, shit, my mom don't know I'm in America. If she know I crash, I'm dead. I'm like, I hope no one will tell her I'm in the hospital. <laughs> then I go, go, we go to the surgery. They put the camera, and they put the liquid. Uh, but before that, the, came, the guy came, one big, massive guy, a little bit darker than me, just like massive. And he look at me and he, he started to talk really nice to me. And I'm like, what are you going to do? And he's like, I'm going to shave your penis. <laughs> I'm like, why do my penis have anything to do with my spin? He's like, because we're going to cut next to it and we're going to put a camera. And I'm like, oh, great. We're going to be good friends then. <laughs> <laughs> then he starts shaving, start, they start to put the camera, and luckily, with the liquid, they could, uh, they could, um, do, um, they could fill up the hole when it was leaking. Then I was perfect, then I stayed two or three days in the hospital, and I went off, and uh, yeah, my friend was waiting in the parking in the RV, <laughs> waiting for me to get out of the hospital, and because I was Captain America, they caped, I mean, they, they cut it, they we kept it and I still have it in the house. 
a little bit of the crash is all broken, but I still have it. And uh, yeah, he waits for me. And, uh, and luckily, there is no shit inside the costume either. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I didn't shit in my costume. I didn't die in a helicopter. Oh yeah, and I forgot the worst, the, the worst, but not the. Las Vegas is the most uh, busy trauma emergencies in all America. I went in emergencies, like I say, before I was sinking to the to the surgery. People start to work on me really good, you know, like they put uh, the plate on the back for my back and everything. I'm like this, and all of a sudden, every every everyone left me. I'm alone. I don't know if I'm better or not. And I see a lot of people just like running around because a gang fight. Two gangs been fighting. They was bringing two bodies, one on the left, one on the right. They've been shot. They shot each other. People was fighting in emergencies. They have to close all the door because they were still fighting uh, for the... It was, it was gnarly. And this guy probably lived 30 seconds because I heard the beep. I heard him puking once and beep. They put, uh, you know what they do in the U.S., just the cushion between the, the, the beds. And I'm in the middle, and I'm like, what the fuck I'm doing there? And the other guy, he, I, I could have heard him like just, ah! and after nothing else, it looked like it was a rush. And after, they come back to me an hour later, oh, we're going to take care of you now. And I was like, holy fuck, I was shitting myself, and I'm like, what about those guys and my friend saw everything outside? The guy was waiting for me, Robin, with an RV. He's like, dude, if you saw what I saw, I was hiding in the van. I was shitting myself. I saw people that just left the body. They opened the car, left the body, and left. Oh, and I'm like, dude, there was next to me, and I seen one guy die. I'm like, oh, I'm sure. Because it was a big gang fight. And I was like, oh, I want to go home. <laughs> I want to go home, and I can. And I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. So that was the first time, but uh, from what you, you say, you didn't really realize you, you died. You just, uh, shit just happened and yeah, yeah, you yeah. went with the flow. It's nothing you can do, really. You just wait for, yeah. But, yeah. No, I think I was just lucky because I heard, I, what I saw on the side, it was a lot more scary than me than, all of a sudden, everything goes to perspective. It's like, I mean, those guys, they die because they shoot each other. And after uh, I saw a poor lady, man, it was horrible. Uh, I think she crashed into a wall or a pole of 90, 80 miles an hour. And uh, the guy going smoking cigarette, they just fucking go outside in front of me. And the, the door, they all go out to hang out. It just, they have to pass my bed. And one guy's like, oh, it's nothing. The, one of the doctors said, oh, it's nothing we can do for her legs. We just have to chop the two legs and whatever. She's alive. She should be happy. And I was in bed like this. And this guy apparently was living. Uh, uh, his time was over. You have to go home. And the new guy came. And the guy said, well, go home. I'm going to try to see what I can do. And I was like, what you can do? Of course, I try to save at least one leg. <laughs> I was like, I was like, that poor girl just crashed. You don't know how, but I mean, from no leg to maybe one or try maybe to save both, it's a big difference. I mean, it, 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 that's why I realized that, you know, it's, it's, things are crazy in life. I mean, you're just there for a moment. Then, shit happens. Uh, shit happens, yeah. I'm, like, I'm going to save the big questions uh, how to to get back? How do you get back on the bike? But first, talk you through, uh, talk us through the the next crash. Oh, uh, next time you die. Yeah, well, that that was easy. Mechanical problem, valdisol. Three corner, two corners after the start when it's really steep, and the left is like rocks, rocks, roots, and you go left, and it's just like you you avoid rocks. And you have a big right hander, but flat out, not too sharp, but just like big speed and big rocks again. Then I felt good, hit the brakes, and I was behind Brooke, I think. Yeah, behind Brooke, we jumped that double at the top, we enter, and Brooke knew the track right away. Then he started to put some time on me, and it was my first run. Then I started to hit the brakes, and 
I felt like it's not working. And I just have the front brake and there's no way I can... I was already going way too fast just to hit the front brake and we smashed the rocks or smashed a tree. And I'm like, well, Cedric, now you're going for the right corner because I cannot go straight because in front, in front of me, just have one guy with a camera behind his camera. If I go 60K an hour into that guy, into his camera, I kill him. Then I'm like, well, try to hit that rat into the corner. And I remember entering, but just so much power and pressure just went sideways and I went head, head, feet, head, feet. And I was maybe five or six meters off the tape of the track and I saw that big, big log like this and I was going to land on this on my back. And when I saw it, I saw it and I had the, the lid brace, I saw it and I'm like, all right. Then I put myself like this just to avoid the big impact and it just went straight to my, to my, to my hip and I explode my hip in 40 pieces. It, 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 when you crash, everything goes slower. There's a moment where you can see everything very there's, clear. There's huh? nothing you can do. You yeah. have to make decision. But at, at this speed, any decision are wrong. Because yeah. it, it, you just, well, you try to, uh, you lost because it's so fast and you're between trees and rocks and trees. And I remember one guy with a camera, he was all white and I tried to get up. I get up like this. One part wanted to get up, but this part was still on the ground. And then I'm like, oh. All right, so back to the hospital. Back to the hospital. They couldn't do anything. Uh, I have to sign the papers. And if I die, I die during the transfer. But those people couldn't fix me. Then uh, I went to France. We find the best doctor. They had one case the same as me, but he died. Then I'm like, oh, great. I'm going to be number two, but I hope I survive. Because it's a lot of blood, it's a lot of blood, and we're talking about forty explosion, forty pieces. They, they, they don't know. Then I stay one week in agencies. We just like suffering with the pain because in one time, like the the, the the morphine is not working for you anymore. You just your body is so intelligent; it just accept the, just accept the pain. Then for one week you have the pain. Uh, and they had a private jet uh, for my insurance to bring me from Italy to to lose, but I'd survive because I was eight of hemoglobin, wow. and I made it. Then uh, after I was still leaking, but they fixed that. Then I could wait one week in the agencies, no TV. <laughs> it was horrible. You know, all the people from car accident, people would die. You just you're just in there. You just hope you're not next like this. And after they put me to the box, they show me the chair. They're going to put me on the side. They're going to they cut me all the way to here, all the way. Yeah, they cut from here all the way to the top of my knob <laughs> and the back all the way to here. They put me on the side. They open in half. They look at all the bones, put it together to plates, and they hope it works, and it worked. But uh, it was good because it took one week to learn the case with all the school, you know, in Montpellier and Toulouse. And after they learned the case in one week, I uh, show up in the block, like it was a garage like this, like a writer's boutique. And you just have 14 people. You are naked. You have a stupid blue bonnet on your head and everyone is there looking for you. And you look at the anesthetist guy and he's like, your age. And you're like, do everyone is going to stay? And he's like, yeah, we're going to learn the case. Like, yeah. I'm going to be naked here. It's like, don't worry, I film and I show you. And I remember he showed me the beginning of the, when I, when I sleep and they prepare me and before they cut, I didn't want to see when they cut. <laughs> uh, it was gnarly and he was with his phone. It was, <laughs> it was crazy. That's the second time. And the third time is probably the most famous because it was, <laughs> uh, at least some version was put online. Bloody CG. <laughs> Bloody CG, yeah. Well, uh, I couldn't put the real one. If I put the real one, the only, person we saw the real one and are obliged to look is my dad 56 minutes of pure blood from uh, ha 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 to oh shit we're losing him <laughs> then uh, yeah for that especially for a dad to watch this is difficult it was like and my dad is pretty he contained himself he's mm -hmm. he's pretty good you know but he looked at me and he's like wow i didn't know it was that bad i'm like yeah what do you think 
That, that that was a that's a long time to wait almost an hour when yeah, you're yeah, bleeding yeah. out yeah the doctor couldn't believe like i think i had a, not even two liters left in my body and i was still conscious I, le i left twice but when i left i heard my friend yelling so much and i wake up and i look at him and I'm like, it was a joke <laughs> and that's bad because you see on the video it's bad right. you see i'm gone because yeah, yeah. he start yelling 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 and I'm not reacting at all and then I'm like fuck when I saw it for real I was like oh fuck at this point I was dead <laughs> <laughs> so, so now the big questions how the fuck do you get back on a bike after after dying well I told the doctors right away I'm like hey if you're not able to fix or if you're not 100% you're going to fix me just to walk around just don't do it Because if I don't ride my bike, that's the only thing I like to do in life. That's that's the sport will give me the most pleasure or fun or whatever it is with friends or with professionals or racing or not. That's the thing I want to do. I want to go and go and buy my bread with my bike. I want to do this. I want if I'm not allowed to ride my bike and I can't ride my bike, I yeah, tell but you, you didn't. Get back on the bike to go get the bread. You went back on the bike to it, go racing. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why. I just wanted to race, and I mean, to was, was it a question? Was it a question? You said maybe I should stop racing and no. just go get the bread on the bike, or no? Not well, yet? it was racing at the time because I was still hungry for racing. No, no, like I say, for victory because I never really did. What, but when I got it, I was happy. But, uh, yeah, for me, it was a point like, hey, I want to still ride my bike. I want this to be my life still. Then I told him, like, hey, if you don't think you can do it, I will find some, someone who can. And the guy was like, let's put it that way. You fix me or I fucking kill you. And the guy stepped back. He's like, but you have to understand it's a big job. I'm like, I don't care. When I go to the races, <laughs> I go flat out. <laughs> I could win or I can lose, but at least I go big commitment. Then tomorrow when you show up, you show up with the same when I go to the races. <laughs> and the guy was like, when he finished and it was a success after four months, he see me racing and I win in front of Fabien Barret in Fena Sosa by one minute. I come back to the hospital. He's like, I can't believe. I can't believe. I'm like, well, it's better for you. I'm like this today. <laughs> because maybe you cannot talk right now <laughs> but I remember he said like he was he was a little bit intimidated because the way I told him I told him like hey it's easy I know you're going to go home tonight see your family it's fine I'm here in the shit since one week or the same in the second accident for me it's a big difference of like the way you fix people I mean either you give your love your 100% you learn and you're good Or if not, if, if I'm in another piece of meat, no. No worth it. No worth it. And the guy understands. He's like, now, nah, Cedric, I'm going to do my best like I do to every of my clients. I'm like, yeah. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crazy. All right. So, yeah. Uh, very, very interesting. And um, maybe just one more, one more tip. Uh, not about the hard crash like you had, but even just you fall Uh, or you miss a jump or something, and how do you get back on it? What what tip could you give to people who are struggling to get back onto the speed and jump high and just because they had a fail? Well, this I uh, had one guy in my camps. That's what we learned in the camp as well. You know, like some people, some you know, I didn't know. Like I take for example one guy who had a pro bike shop camp uh, in. Uh, Uh, close to Saint Etienne, and one guy, I see him, he was not bad on the bike, but he was so afraid of everything. And I'm like, what the fuck is your problem? You look like you're afraid. You look good on the bike, you know how to react, you know how to break, but all of a sudden, all of a sudden, when visually it became a little bit more complicated, you hit the brakes, and after I find out, then he crash and... Um, Something happened on his stomach, and it was the first time he come back on the bike. I'm like, hey, tell me next time. And we start from, from where we have to start. If I knew I would never bring you to this or this right away. Then we start, and he got a little bit of um, confidence in him, a little bit more. 
And then at the end of the day, he was jumping again. But for him, it was just like here. He was like so afraid because he was staying uh, on his uh, accident. Mm. He, he couldn't go over it. He was thinking it was impossible. He could ride a little trail, but when it was getting a little bit steep or a jump, he just couldn't do it. Then I took it two minutes, a little bit following me, this and that. And after he was like, again, happy. Yeah. And I saw him at Rock d'Azur uh, <laughs> two weeks, uh, last week. So the trick to get build by confidence is... You stand uh, up and you go. Yeah, and you go little yeah. by little, but not too little by little. No, you no. you got to go step by step, but... Uh, you have to grow balls. <laughs> well, in life, is the same. You yeah. know, you make mistakes, you get up and go again and fight. If not, well, life is going to be hard. Let's leave it on those uh, beautiful poetic words. Grow back some balls. Grow some balls, bro. <laughs> Thank you, CG. <laughs> Ciao. Ciao.